hello, hello, everyone out there watching. Just want to uh, thank you for watching today. Um, I've got a very special guest with us today. And this, this special guest comes to us via a, a Facebook post. Um, I've, I've watched this person over time uh, just get just give so much value on his Facebook profile um, with his live, with his live recordings, with his inspirational posts, and his inspirational posts vary from uh, living a healthy lifestyle to having the right mindset, all the way to living your best life. And I had to meet this man and I reached out to him and we connected a little bit, you know, back and forth, commenting on each other's posts. And I said, hey, let's let's sit down and have a chat. I, and uh, I've got Mr. Daryl John III with us today. So Daryl, give everyone a, uh, an introduction. Tell us about yourself. Hello, my name's Daryl. I am in Seattle and I'm, I'm glad to be here. This is um, new and different to me. I have never been on a live interview. So I'm, I'm excited to see what, what this brings today. And uh, I hope that I can enlighten people and um, continue to share uh, and value and, and help others along the way. Okay. Um, so I don't, where should I go from here? Tell us, tell us a little bit uh, about your background. Um, why are you in, or you're in the online marketing space and you're doing affiliate marketing. How did you, how did you get started along this journey? Oh, okay. So over the years, I've tried different things, different types of marketing, and they were ne never befitting to me. So I, I guess you could say at times I just walked away from them. And then I decided um, over the course of last year, especially with our world situation currently going on, things, things need to change. So I actually started out as uh, taking some copywriting courses. And I did that over the course of a couple months. And I practiced and, and, you know, I'm a little rusty about it right now because some things came up in my life where actually mm -hmm. I was in a hospital. I had suffered from an injury. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it took me a long time to uh, rebuild my character in the sense of because I, I got like super depressed and couldn't manage myself. But I fought through it the whole time. Mm -hmm. And with that being um, limited in my capacity and uh, in my physical and mental that I decided the one important place to start was to lose weight. And I began that journey once again with, with a, a fellow, his name is, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop his name, his name's Ivan Chung, he's in Vancouver, Canada. Okay. And he just reached out to me one day. He, just, he said, hey man, you're looking to improve your health, lose weight or anything? I said, well, you know, it's strange that you asked me that because I've been really thinking about that because I said, that's the number one thing I need to work. I said, I got something going on up here mm -hmm. and I need to work that out. I said, and my mindset needs to change. And so through the course of almost two months, he walked me through some steps, um, mm -hmm. how to eat better, doing things like tracking calories and, and just being aware of what I'm putting in my body, which, you know, before I wasn't all that um, savvy. I mean, I've done shake diets and other things to, to lose weight that work. Mm -hmm. But I find, find myself gaining the weight back and, and being back at square one. And it's been, I'll call it the 30-year struggle, if you will. Mm -hmm. so, so with that, after he started guiding me through, through the process, there was this one day, a snap. And I was like, I'm owning this. I'm going to lose the weight. And I'm going to eat like this. And it's, it just started to happen even more. And, and, I, and I gained more confidence in myself and I started losing the weight I wanted and then I was working with one other coach and he says try this and try that which I'll share he says try try a 12 hour fast he says do it for five days he says you'll you'll lose five pounds he says if you're gonna drink coffee go black I said well that's a hard one but I'm gonna do it so I drank black coffee but to mitigate the the harshness of the coffee I like sweet coffee I use stevia 
so now, um, ever since I do anywhere from a 10 to 12 hour fast, I drink my 12, I drink my coffee every day mm -hmm. and I've managed to lose 40 pounds. I was 187 pounds when I started and now I'm about 150, between 147, 150 pounds on the average. Wow. And I'm, uh, I'm the lightest I've been since high school. And, and, and I'm 46, so that's a long time <laughs> wow. that I've, I've been at this weight, and that, it feels uh, phenomenal. That is be, impressive. Yeah, I, and, I, and I just feel so blessed that mm -hmm. I arrived here, even though it took me decades to get here. And so I'm only hoping that in my journey and that, that I can share that with others and help them do exactly the types of things that I did to get myself here because I know how important it is to be healthy and just being able to get up and walk around and and, and you can still eat the food you want. Don't get mm -hmm. me wrong, I still smash it once in a while. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna cover that up because that's probably like the best food group there is in the world. <laughs> and um, <laughs> but but it's really about a, a consistent natural diet that I've been doing ever since. And believe it or not, I was Mm -hmm. um, communicating with one of my peers um, on the back end of Facebook and we're, mm -hmm. she's always sharing recipes with, with everybody on her stories and she's like, oh, you do the same thing. And she says, how about a salad? And I said, I got you. I'll come up with a salad. I just finished it right before our meeting mm -hmm. and I just have to type it up and send it off to her. And of course, I make it available to, to everyone um, through my story if they would like to have it and obviously they can see my 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 creation because it was just it was inspired at somebody else's like I really like what you're doing so that just increases my my energy and that increases my output and I'm, I'm just so excited to continue to to add value to others and help them out that's awesome that's awesome I know I we had a short conversation I said that I I could personally tell the difference between some of your earlier photos and now. And I see a, a remarkable difference between just the your face and I could tell that you're eating so healthy. That's super awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. And, and that, that, that's actually funny you said that. Someone said, he's like, man, one of my friends says, man, you, you look younger. And I'm like, I was so taken by that because I'm not used to that. I mean, I know a lot of people say I don't look me, but the fact that someone says through getting to know me, they're like, you, you look younger than And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so thank you. I, I really appreciate that, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. And you know, you know, um, working in the online space, I, I think a lot of people tend to have either irregular eating habits or because, you know, when you're working and for me, I know for me, sometimes it seems like you're working and next thing you know, it's like, oh, you know, three, four, five hours have passed. And it's when you're into your work, it seems like it just flies by. And I might have a tendency to just go out and grab something, although it might not be the healthiest thing for me. What, what advice would you give for those online marketers that might need a little bit of uh, advice on how to eat healthier while still, you know, working online. Well, I'm actually glad you asked that because I find myself in the same situation. Sometimes I'm, I'm work, especially because I still work a job. Sometimes I come right home and get to it. And next thing you know, it's like seven o'clock and I'm like, Oh man, I'm not cooking dinner. That's going to take me another 45 minutes to an hour. So the one thing for me that I do for those situations is I have I, I keep things in my fridge. Like I have like salad kits, like mixed salads. I, I, I keep lots of uh, lemon, carrots, and things like kimchi and avocado, things like that. That way, at least I know I'm putting something in my body like I should, and it's healthy. And the one thing that I've discovered about eating salad because a lot of people dread eating salad without putting dressing on it. And that's usually the, the kicker in mean, a dressing is people put too much on and it's usually not the best thing. So I've found that simply by kicking, squeezing from 
fresh lemon juice or lime juice, sprinkling it with some sea salt, maybe put a little bit of grated cheese just to add a little flavor. And mm. honestly, it's the best salad I've ever had. Mm. I mean, and, and the thing, there's no dreading it. In fact, I've got to a point sometimes I grab in the bag and just eat the lettuce out because I've gotten so used to it. I'm not, of course, I, I don't want to, you, you might call me a rabbit or something, but <laughs> um, I actually enjoy it. Mm. And it, it, it's just nice to know that instead of worrying about, you know, if I hadn't done anything, is that I can just go to the fridge maybe cut a couple things, throw together and have a meal in 10 or 15 minutes. And then the other thing they can do is if a person knows they have an off day where they're not going to do so much business related, mm -hmm. is, is they could do meal prep and, and they can make a bulk of food, whether they want to freeze it, maybe keep a couple portions and some containers over for a couple of days and eat from that. But that way they can, you know, if they want to freeze it, then they can have varieties for later or, mm -hmm. you know, just that way made it one and done and it can portion it maybe if you use a microwave or, or if you want to throw something in the oven you just toss it in go back to work you know throw your timer on that way you don't burn anything and uh, you can have a <laughs> go that. that way too <laughs> <laughs> so, so <laughs> those are definitely some ways that you can uh, mitigate um eating habits when you get out of hand and i still find myself there sometimes but at least having Fresh vegetables are definitely a way to to help you in mm -hmm. a situation where you just realize how late it is. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you talked a lot about the diet. Are you incorporating anything else other than diet to uh, for your healthy regimen? Yes. So what I do is, I mean, as far as eating, I mean, sometimes I'll, I'll be, you know, I even third thoroughly. Uh, Throw my honesty in there. Sometimes I have cravings for certain things. Pizza is one of them, which I actually keep that to a minimum because I can eat a whole pizza. But I, I like things like peanut butter and uh, mm. corn chips or tortilla chips. And the thing with peanut butter is, you know, if you eat too much, you, you tend to gain weight, especially if your diet's not, you know, very synced with you. But I, I found at least when I splurge, it doesn't affect me too much where it used to, where I'd gain 10 pounds from eating a jar of peanut butter. But, um, but I, I exercise too. Um, it's not a great deal at the moment, uh -huh. but I do. But when I get up in the morning, I do some body exercises like push ups, crunches, uh, squats, or burpees. Maybe do some like, uh, you know, like curls or things. I have some resistant bands because I don't have any weights, but at least the resistance bands. You know, they're good for doing certain exercises that, you know, help build that extra strength. Okay. And recently, um, since the limited av uh, availability of in-class and, and timing uh, restrictions, not for me, but from the other side, is, uh, I, I wanted to learn Tai Chi. So I've been watching some videos on YouTube to kind of give me a baseline until I'm, you know, able to change my schedule because I totally look forward to doing things more in person. Uh, because it's been, you know, living single, that's been a huge challenge not to have those uh, mm -hmm. social interactions. And so I definitely look forward to it. And I'm definitely finding that Tai Chi is definitely interesting. And it's not, not as easy as it looks. Can I stop just for one second? I think I smell something burning out in the kitchen. <laughs> yes, go and get it, please. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, there is, but that's okay. I can fix it later. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's uh, funny. I was because you were talking uh, about setting the timer <laughs> so you don't burn something, and then whoo, yep. <laughs> I hope yep. you don't. You're good. not. You're gonna set the house on fire. Oh, I know. <laughs> I was like, what's that? No, oh, no. <laughs> I'm I'm still recording, by the way. That's that's okay. I'm I'm all right with being candid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. I'm I'm actually uh, with boiling beans. I I'll see what I can salvage. I plan on making a um, a hummus with black beans as opposed to chickpeas because I thought 
why not something different? And so whatever I have left, I'll, I'll make some hummus with it. <laughs> <laughs> so did you, did you just pick up this cooking or how did you become such no. a, a really good with, uh, with making all these recipes? Well, when I, when I was young, I hung out in the kitchen a lot with my mom and I'd watch her a lot and I got ideas. And it, as a matter of fact, I can remember certain times, especially in my childhood, in the summertime, both parents working and I lived in a rural area, so I didn't have access to, to fast foods or anything like that. All I did was I opened the fridge and be like, that's what I'm cooking. And then um, my mom would get home and she's like, Daryl, what happened to this or what happened to that? And I'd be like, I don't know. She's like, I bought this and it's gone. Oh, that. I was hungry, mom. I, I, I was hungry. <laughs> that was for dinner. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, you know, the growing pains of childhood, I guess, appearance, <laughs> knowing the food disappear from time to time. <laughs> and so, That's an you know, watching term. that, yeah, and just watching my mom and helping her um, just throughout my childhood and here and there until I grew up. I just started learning things. I've worked in restaurants a little bit, not so much on the side of the kitchen when I was younger, but I, I, I dishwasher busboy, but I still was able to, um, you know, just catch things. And then in my last, let's see, this 2021, so back in 2015, um, I, I was going through, a, well, actually between 2013 and 14, I was going through a tough time in my life. And so what happened is, you know, I got into trouble, but I needed to get back on my feet. And so I went to a program here in Seattle it's called Chair Start, and it's a 16 week culinary program. And they teach you the basics of kitchen work. It's like 101 kitchen. So through that program, I was able to gain confidence and basic skills to start working in the kitchen. So Ever since 2015, I've been working either in prep kitchens or, or um, just regular uh, restaurants where people go to eat. And I've just, I've, I've found a joy in cooking foods and, and at times, especially with, you know, at home and doing some other group related activities. I've cooked foods for up to 80 people, you know, for, um, you know, for events and things. So oh, wow. it's, it's really, it's really, yeah, an amazing journey in the sense of cooking food. Mm. And so mm. the one thing that's really interesting is that I've, with, with these changes, you know, getting into the online space, and mm -hmm. even though I'm still cooking, I've found that I have a disinterest in cooking professionally. Uh -huh. But I want to cook more for people uh -huh. and, and even do it on a voluntary level where it's needed because I just, I like to feed people and I like to, create things that are, are health, you know, healthy and delicious. And sometimes they're not so healthy, but they're definitely delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a, you have a disinterest but, to doing it professionally. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I've been doing it for about six years and I can't say that I've learned everything, but I've definitely learned a lot. And I've even um, contemplated even um, maybe even doing some YouTube videos because I see a lot of people who influence do those types of things and i'm thinking maybe i should do that too because why not so i have to work on those things and get myself a, a maybe a micro studio setup of some sort and and work on that um just thinking yeah. about the salad that i created for my peer today i was thinking if i just had like a couple cameras and i could have just been talking while i was working and you know i was like you i gotta do something to, to change that <laughs> you and you've got the studio. Is that uh, is that Dan Lock on the poster behind you? Oh, the one that's oh the one. Yep, yeah, that's the one falling down. Yeah, I have to reset. It's, it. it's falling Dan down Lock. a little I bit went, there. Yes, I have to get some new. You know what? I gotta put a new sticky on it. And I went to his uh, copywriting course last year, and that's where I started my my business journey. I. But what had happened is uh, along, my, along the way with mm -hmm. my 
uh, injury and ending up in the hospital, it, I mean, it really knocked me down to the count in, in the sense of my, my mental capacity. Mm -hmm. And so in some sense, I stepped away from it, but not so completely because occasionally when um, I post things, I tend to uh, write some content for people to share stories um, about myself or things that I've gone through. And I use uh, some of that framework to, to make my post and it's definitely been helpful um, to share those stories with people. Oh, yes, yes. I'm a, I'm a firm believer that it's our stories that make us who we are and our unique stories. If, if we went through life without any drama, <laughs> we'd all be the same. How boring would that be, Daryl? I know, right? <laughs> yeah. What would we live and grow from? And what would we, why would we be motivated? We would just sit around and eat grapes and cherries all day. I don't know. <laughs> 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 yeah. But it's those experiences that shape us who we become, who we become. And it's the journey that I enjoy the most. I enjoy. So, Talking about uh, the journey, you know, um, how your journey in the, uh, the online space, you know, I've, I've seen that, uh, you know, some people tend to struggle out there. They, they might struggle with not getting results. They might struggle with just staying motivated over a, a longer, longer periods of time. How? Right. How have, how have you been able to stay motivated in, uh, in the online space? Well, for me, the one thing that I told myself, and sometimes I catch myself backsliding a little bit, but I remind myself again, that right before the turn of, of between 21, 2020 and 21, I said to myself, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it or break it this year because I have nothing to lose. Uh, with our ec economic shift. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nothing to lose. I, 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 I need to adjust some things <laughs> with the economic. <laughs> uh, you know, I just moved that mirror the other day because my, my buddy says, hey, you should put the mirror in, in, in a spot. You can get to it easy. You could talk into it to practice certain things you want to say, you know, when you want to say to people or you're doing your affirmations or whatnot. And mm -hmm. so I moved it over here as opposed to over my other wall because, because of the resonation and, and the walls are a little thin. So I figured I better, I sh maybe I shouldn't talk to my neighbors while I'm talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> you've got a, you've got a nice studio there. I've seen your, I've seen your live recordings and you, you've got the microphone. Oh, yeah. You've got the lighting, just lights, True. cameras, go, YouTube. Right. But, well, I was just thinking more of just getting myself set up in a kitchen, just um, trying to come up with something creative so I could walk around and not um, trip over myself because I do that a lot. Um, but <laughs> definitely, I have tripods and, and I have a couple ring lights and definitely I have one of these, these things too, uh, a gimbal. Um, uh, that's the, that's the, that's the smooth. Yeah. Yeah. They're gyroscopic. So you can like walk around and do crazy things like movie style, honestly. And the one thing I've been really blessed is I just bought a cell phone or a smartphone recently and I didn't pay very much for it. And it's not like a well-known brand, but it's crazy because the photo quality that I get when I use it is like phenomenal. And it, and I, I'm not, not bragging, but it almost is as good as, as an iPhone photo. So I'm super stoked about, you know, having at least good imagery because I think it's important that people, they want to see good quality photos um, because it's all that, it's that uh, psychological aspect of things. If something looks good, it, it definitely will attract people to, to, to view it or, you know, buy it or wh whatever the case may be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was doing some reading about uh, 
some photo images recently because I'll be, uh, I, have a, I have a YouTube channel and I hadn't really put uh, my face on any of the thumbnails, but it's been proven that when you do have a face, you, you can improve your click-through rates and not just a face, but a face that shows expression. And that's why you see you, you, you see the uh, the thumbnails with. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I've never been able to, to bring myself to doing those expressions. It's like, they were like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some, sometimes it, it, it is, it's hard because it's a little bit of work, but you know, I find sometimes I can express that myself that way. If I'm out walking or something and I'm listening to something and then all of a sudden I'm like, strike a pose, you know, just like, like a dance move. <laughs> <laughs> but there's some, some YouTube videos and they'll look like, <laughs> it's just like really right. exaggerated. Like going 100 miles an hour. <laughs> But you think, oh, you think if if they're using it, that it must be working. It must be working. No, but you, we had uh, gotten off. Uh, you were talking about staying motivated, right? So the one thing you know is it's definitely mindset. And like I was saying, um, between 2020 and twenty twenty one, I especially once I got introduced to affiliate nation that. I, I told myself, I'm all in, I'm gonna break myself or, or I'm gonna make it because I have nothing to lose uh, uh, because I'm single. And so I figured, why not make it even if I get broke along the way, because why not? You know, the world has shifted, things are, are, are vastly different. And I've always wanted to employ myself in the sense of not have to report to a schedule, not having to report to a place, and just being able to have the freedom of, of my own time. It gives me that way I can help people, whether it's, you know, people who are business related or, you know, if I can help somebody down the street who, who needs something to eat, you know, it's really, really just having that freedom to do the extra things. Because when you're trying to just a job, where you have to get there, you have certain times, this, that, and the other, you're always restricted to that schedule. Even if you wanted to do something, you're always putting it up, putting yourself off because you know you have that limitation because there's the expectation that you show up every day, same time, same place. And whether you feel like it or not, most of the time, it, it's not always easy to call off sick, depending on some types of work cultures or more lenient, but some are less lenient, which I, I've definitely found over the years. And working in kitchen is definitely uh, much le less lenient, especially if your position is where they highly depend on you to show up every day because you're you're running like 70% of the background until the rest of the show comes. And you'll, so for me, you'll, but, either, you'll either spend your time building others' dreams or you'll spend your time building your dreams. Exactly. And I figure why not do my best to build my dreams and you know, use my money as the vehicle to get me there, even if I'm living on a slim budget, because honestly, the only other thing I would be doing is just saving the money, which really in essence isn't doing a whole lot for me either because if you look at the way money flows in the sense of putting it in the bank and just interest rates, I mean, who gives a great interest rate? I have yet to find a bank who, who gives a phenomenal bank rate for holding your, your cash with them. It, it, it's not even, you know, the best rate I've ever seen is I've had like, like $10,000 in a bank account and, you, and, and the returns like $120 a year. I mean, they sure, they sure like, will charge you a lot of interest when you borrow that money though. Oh, they will charge you way more for sure. So I mean, it's, it's an unequal offset, yes. you know, for sure. So to me, 
to get that extra hundred bucks or something per year, it isn't even worth my thought because it's just a way, it's a creative way to get people just to hold their money there, which there's nothing wrong with banks to, to hold your money because, you know, God forbid you have, you know, a million dollars and it's all sitting in one place and someone robs you, well, then you're, you're out of luck, you know, but at the same time, just to rely on them for a sense of any equity, I mean, it, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing in it for you. What? Um, so for me, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, no, I was just going to, I was going to ask you another question. Um, just saying, what is the number one thing that you would say to someone who is thinking about starting in affiliate marketing? Well, I, I say, do you like the way your bank flow is? is are, are, you, are you where you're at in your life? You, is, is what you're doing your dream job? Uh, are you happy? Can you do what you want when you want? Because that, that's how I feel about the approach. And with the program I'm in, it's a high ticket offer. And, you know, I could sell like a thousand things you know, at a low, you know, at a low cost, or I can sell a high ticket and do it a couple times a month and, and be, I don't want to be satisfied because I, I want to, no matter what I'm doing in my business, as long as I continue to grow, whether it's financially or on a personal growth, then I know that I'm doing the right things because with the personal growth, the rest will come. And, and I'll just throw that out there. Personal growth has been my biggest uh, thing that I'm advocating for myself because of the horrible mindsets that I've acquired over the years and the bad the bad habits. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I've been working with uh, a couple different coaches and now I'm in pursuit of, of a mentor to help build my inner circle and then I'm going to continue to look for other other men to build into my inner circle because I, I really feel that if you're going to accomplish great things, you need people around you to help you do those great things. And they're already doing great things. And you need to have them in your, in, in your, you know, in your life supply. Mm -hmm. That way you can continue to better yourself. Oh, yeah. And as far as, as far as affiliate marketing, I mean, I think it's a great avenue to go. I don't have to carry any products. I don't have to drop ship anything. And I can be wherever I want, whenever I want. Obviously, when I get to that, that part of my, my journey. But when, when I'm getting there, I can literally just pick up and move across the country, live there for six months, and then go live somewhere else. I mean, what, how many you know, regular jobs allow that? For somebody just to go and do that and still allow them to work. Now, we know that there are more remote opportunities where there were none before, but there's still not enough in, in the sense that, you know, why not as opposed to just being locational? Because that's, that's, that's been a struggle for me. I've lived in, I've lived in Pennsylvania. I've lived in uh, Colorado. I've lived in uh, Illinois for a couple summers and then here and honestly there's something about it I like to move around but mm -hmm. being in that locational mindset it's hard just to get up and go because you literally have to put yourself on the line every time you get up and go not having a place to live you might be on the street because that's exactly how I came to Seattle I was on the street for a while and that's that's no place any, that I recommend anybody if it, they can avoid it ever in their life that's an awesome story from the streets to the penthouse. And uh, you hear those stories? Yeah. And uh, I'm so proud of you. That's, that's awesome that um, you sought out the, the council or just knowing that uh, they say that you should never be the smartest person in the room. When you're the smartest person in the room, it's time to get in a different room with people, surround yourself with people that are smarter than you because you'll definitely learn and grow that way. So it's, uh, it's at, can you believe it's, uh, we're approaching the 
40 minute mark in this interview. Oh my goodness, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Even, I would have never even realized that it it's gone this long. It's just been um, flowing. <laughs> <laughs> I love. I love talking with you, Daryl. You're. Uh, you've got some. Of tremendous insights into the world of affiliate marketing. You've got awesome insights into how to maintain a healthy lifestyle while being an online marketer. And I'm and if anyone's watching this far, uh, they've gotten tremendous value from you. But I want you to give us something in your last words that you want to leave with anyone out there that is listening right now and it's your floor. All right. So what I want to say to anyone out there who, who has desires, dreams, they want to pursue goals. Don't think about it. Do it. Do it because you're worth it. You, you're, 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 you're your unique you and you have everything in here to get it done. And no matter what, if there's a struggle, always look for someone to help you out, whether it's a mentor or a coach or somebody who is supportive of what you're doing. Because I believe that if you put your mind to it, you can do it. Yes, yes. If uh, anyone wants to get in touch with you, how would they? Well, they can certainly reach out to me on Facebook. And also, let's see. You can reach me on Instagram. Um, do I, I, do, I wouldn't know how to, you know, should I drop my email or? Uh, what I'll do is I will uh, put the, I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. So we'll, we'll, get, okay. your inst we'll get your Instagram and we'll flash it across okay. the bottom of the screen along with the correct spelling of your name because they have to remember it's Daryl John the third. Right. Yep. Yep. I'm the only one out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's two R's, two L's. That's right. That's right. All right. And it's, and it's awesome. Mark, I really appreciate that you, you called on me for this meeting today. I, I'm so glad to meet the man behind. Um, we'll call you the, I'm going to call you, not only are you the mental marketer, but I want to call you the obsessive commenter. <laughs> <laughs> Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, boom, right? Like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks well, for tuning in. Thanks for us sticking around to the end. Until next time, take care, and we'll talk to you soon.